we will discuss how to draw free body diagrams. Very simply put, free body diagram is a pictorial or a visual illustration of the force in the moments acting on an object when it is removed from its surrounding or everything else that is it's attached to or interacting with. Uh, before you can do any force or moment analysis, for example, using Newton's second law um, or doing equilibrium analysis, as we'll see later on, the first step would be to show the quarter system and draw the free body diagram. You would not be able to do any analysis, uh, write any equation unless you have a correct free body diagram. And if you draw your free body diagram incorrectly, no analysis will give you the right answer. Okay, so this is a very important critical prerequisite to doing any kind of force and moment analysis. So, so let's just start with a simple example. Let's say I have a block resting on a surface and I say, give me the free body diagram of this block. Okay, I'm looking for the free body diagram of this block. That means that I have to first of all draw that block all by itself which means that now I'm not going to show the ground anymore, okay, because it is interacting with the ground. I have to remove it from its surrounding, from everything that is attached to or is interacting with. So I will draw the object by itself. Let's call it A, okay, and I will show all the forces acting on, on A. So the force that is acting on it is, of course, the gravity. That's the gravitational pull of the Earth. And then because it was resting on the surface, the effect of that surface on which it was resting was to provide a normal reaction in the upward direction. So I will show that normal reaction. So these two diagrams are actually perfectly equivalent because I have replaced the presence of the ground over here with the normal reaction. That's the important part. Let's look at the same block, but now this block is actually experiencing more forces. So let's say there's a push F applied on it this way, and there is some friction between the block and the surface, okay? And because it is moving, we know it will be kinetic force of uh, friction. So I want to draw free body diagram. I will draw the block itself. I'll show the force F. I'll show the normal reaction. I'll show the, the weight, okay? And then I will have the friction force mu k times n, which is the kinetic force of friction that will oppose this motion. Now remember, kinetic force of friction always oppose the relative motion. Here is another example. Let's say I have an incline and I have a block here and I have this block tied to a spring. Okay, and I know that there is some friction between the block and the surface and uh, it's moving in the downward direction. Okay, and I want to draw free body diagram of this block, which means that I have to separate it out from its surrounding, draw it in the same configuration. So if it is shown like this, I will do that. I will have the normal reaction from the ground, from the incline, that would be n that way. Uh, I will have the weight, which is m times g vertically downward. Assuming that this spring is in tension and it is extended by delta and its spring constant is k, then the force of a stretch is k delta. That's going to pull it in the opposite direction. And also I have the friction force mu k times n. Another thing that I would advise you do is also show your coordinate system overlaid on the free body diagram. So if let's say over here your coordinate system is like this, then you should show this to be x and this as y same thing over here x and this is as y and the advantage of doing this over here is that when you write newton's second law or do the equilibrium analysis you will clearly be able to see which forces are positive which forces are negative so for example in this case you know this f would be positive because it's acting along positive x direction this mg would be negative because it's acting along negative y direction so over here in the third example uh, i will choose my coordinate system to go this way i'll call this to be x and this to be y. Okay, so if I do that, I can clearly see that mu k n is, is in positive x direction, k delta is in positive x direction. Now mg over here is not strictly along x and y directions, so I will have to resolve it. So let's say this angle is theta, then this angle is theta. So I'll resolve it along this direction, I'll resolve it along this direction, and that would tell us which one is positive, which one is negative. Okay, so free body diagram, whenever you draw it, make sure that you take that object, you separate it out from everything it's interacting with, uh, which could be ground, which could be other objects, and then show all the forces acting on it. And sometimes they'll also have the moments, so you show them as well. Um, and that would complete your free body diagram along with the coordinate system. Now let's look at a couple of examples. So let's say I have an incline and I have a car here, all right? I have a car. 
and there is a girl who is pushing this card okay with her hands all right i know it's not a very good diagram but i guess you get the idea all right and the question is what is the free body diagram of the girl and the free body diagram of the car okay assume that there is friction acting between the inclined plane and the the girl's feet as well as between uh, the car and the ground um, and of course you have the gravity right so if we want to draw the free body diagram of the girl i'll say free body diagram of the girl and i'll draw the girl all by herself okay so now i'm not going to show the incline i'm not going to show the car and i'll just show the girl herself so i have the normal reaction so because she's in an incline right so that's an n and then i have mg which is the weight same as before now she's pushing the car in this direction which means from newton's third law she's experiencing the same force of push in the opposite direction okay uh, what else now, of course if she is applying a push force then there has to be friction between her feet and the ground otherwise she'll be slipping which means that she there will be a friction force let's call it ff uh, acting that way right and you can you can see that this this has to be this way because when she's pushing the ground she's pushing the ground in the in the backward direction and the ground is pushing her in the forward direction and that's why this friction force is shown uh, in that direction now if you draw the free body of the car what kind of forces do you have you have the same force f push which you have here from newton's third law applied by the girl on the car then you have normal reactions on the two wheels let's call them n1 and n2 you have the gravity acting downward right and if the wheels were locked if they were slipping then you would also have the friction force okay so if this is going upward and the wheels are locked right so wheels are not rolling when the wheels are rolling uh, the the situation is a little bit more complete as to which direction the friction force would be acting so let's assume that this entire car uh, is act, is basically acting like a solid object and the wheels are not rotating so wheels are essentially locked they're slipping so if they're slipping then we know the friction force on each of those wheels would be in the downward direction mu k n1 and there will be mu k n2 because friction forces always oppose the relative motion let's look at another example let's say i have three books book a book b and book c lying on top of each other on a table okay and each of them have some weight of course and we're looking to draw free body diagram of every one of these books one by one so i'll say okay free body diagram of a i have the weight of the books as mag and there will be a normal reaction between A and B, right? Because A is supported on B, so we'll call that normal reaction NAB, okay? To indicate that's a normal reaction between A and B, okay? All right, that's fine. Now, what about free body diagram of B? So we'll draw B by itself. So we have the weight. Then we have the normal reaction between B and C. So C supporting B, so that would go in the upward direction. We'll call it NBC right now if you just stop here then you would have missed the force because there is a reaction there is a, a interaction between a and b as well right so this nab was applied by b on a from newton's third law the same force nab is acting in the downward direction on b applied by a right okay then we have free body diagram of c we have the normal reaction from the ground we'll call it nc we have the weight okay anything else is missing well we also have the interaction between b and c so we have this nbc acting in the down, downward direction on c and that would complete the free body diagram of the three books so notice how we do not have to worry about how the weight of a applies on the b and the weight of a and b together applies on the c because all those things will be taken care by these reactions okay so now if you're interested we'll do the equilibrium analysis a little bit later we can do this over here because we know newton's second law so we know that newton's second law says sigma f equal to ma we know that a b and c are not going anywhere which means their acceleration is zero so the right hand side would be zero okay so sigma f on a is equal to zero so let's say this is positive y direction this is positive x direction so we have n a b minus m a g equal to zero and that gives you n a b equal to m a g which is 
what we expected. For B, we have sigma FB equal to zero because the acceleration of B is also zero. So we have uh, NBC minus NAB minus MBG equal to zero. So that gives us NBC equal to NAB plus MBG. And NAB from here is equal to MAG. So that would be MA plus MBG. So from this now you can see that it makes sense that the weight of A, the book A, which is on top of B, is added to the weight of the B to get the normal reaction BC, right? But you do not have to worry about uh, doing that in the free body diagram. In free body diagram, you could just assume the reactions and you'll get the right answer. Let's do the same thing for C. So this is uh, NC minus NBC minus MCG equal to zero. So NC is equal to NBC plus MCG. And NBC is equal is this, so that would be MA plus MB plus MCG. And that's the normal reaction C. And that also makes sense because the book C is in the bottom, so it has to take the weight of itself as well as the weight of A and B, and that reflects in the normal reaction from the ground.